Well, the first one um, that I remember being scared about was working for Kate Sebrano on the Festival Theatre stage doing Foldback, uh, working on a mixing console where I knew what the colours did, but I didn't really know what the knobs did. Yeah, I did make it through because it was mostly all set and she just sung her songs with her band and I just stood there pretending I knew what I was doing. <laughs> It's really hard to say that I've got a favourite performer, but the ones that I really do admire are the ones where their talent is coming out of their pores. Like they switch on and they switch off and you just can't believe that someone one minute talking to you about, you know, the gardening or the shopping that they did, turn around, go on stage and sing out the biggest sensational number of the show. The people who I've met over the years that have left an impression have been Bernadette Peters because she's basically, you know, theatre royalty and what you see on film, on stage and live is all real as well. So that's great. You know, they don't need all the supporting technology. If everything turned off, they walked out holding a candle, they could still do the show. From a male point of view, uh, probably Todd McKenney. I've known him forever and he has just been sure and steady and fabulous for all of these years. He can hold a company together because a lot of the time these performers need to also gel with the company that they're performing in. Otherwise, you've actually got one person doing a show and everyone else trying to follow behind. I, I like all the venues, but they all deliver very different products. The, the festival theatre is always a top end product. So you've got generally a famous slash international or high end product performing in here. If you go off to the Madge Theatre, it's half the volume, potentially similar client, but I think it's the smell of the wood, the floorboards and the antiqueness of the building that just makes you feel so suddenly you're actually, I'm working on a show. You, you know, you walk the boards and it goes creak, creak, creak and you go to switch the light and it's still the old light from the 50s and you know, there's graffiti from all the artists who've gone by that have left the I was here sort of mark. That has a mood to it. Um, the space in the Playhouse, again, one's an experimental venue, which is a, it's a, a cube. So you can actually perform and place yourself anywhere within that cube. So it's, it's interesting because of that. Um, it's really quite threatening from a sound point of view because um, the performer, the audience and the technology are all in the same space. Playhouse, mm -hmm. I've seen some of my favourite shows in the Playhouse course with a lot of the drama that happens there. Um, cabaret, I think it's my favourite venue for cabaret um, just because uh, again you've got lovely grandstand seating, you've got a view, everyone's got a great direct view to stage but you're still, you're there, you can touch them, you can watch them spit. The soundies are constantly talking. In the old days, you know, you'd be out there singing out, you know, downstage centre, sing out Louise, you'd be projecting out and you'd be like your own trumpet. Nowadays they can perform almost isolated to themselves. You'll see them with a hand mic, you'll see them with the inner ear fold back and they've got their eyes shut and they're singing a song to themselves while on stage and 2,000 people looking at them. In the golden olden days they used to fill up their lungs and they used to just shoot it out while they were looking at you in the eye. So yeah, the style of performing has changed. Um, the technology has allowed them to be more intimate with themselves and in the way that they deliver it and also intimate with the room. Mo most people don't fight it. Most people don't have the ability to sing that loud anymore. There's no point fighting your microphone. There's no point fighting your light. You find your light, you find your mic and you go with it and you do a great show. The consummate performers, they know where it is, how it works, what it does and they want it because they know that that makes them even better. Um, he hearing a famous song sung by the famous, the actual famous singer, there's nothing like it. But I, I guess the um, privilege that the onstage backstage staff have is that we've got access. While they're doing it, we walk up to them, we might manipulate something, we might chat to them, they might re-sing it. So having that kind of personal contact and access I is, I suppose, what drives the production staff to do what they're doing. Look, I, I think lying under a concert Steinway listening to Tommy Tico do American in Paris is sensational. Like the guy can play that piece of music as though it was an extension of, the, of, of his fingers. 
um, being under the actual instrument, like not having someone amplify it, not having someone um, interfere with it, and so you're there with his direct raw product, you can't beat that. That's the difference. We're there, we're with it, where the audience are there watching the final thing. So yeah, I, I, I have my moments. Most of them are usually the rehearsal period. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's during a show. Sadly, I don't think I ever feel that on opening, on the openings, on opening nights and things, because you're usually so stressed and so concerned that everyone puts on the show, so we make everyone happy, that you, you kind of lose, you lose that moment. I think what's, what's really interesting working in sound is the fact that so many people believe they understand the medium. We're completely linked with a thread almost between the performer. So no matter what we do, the, pro the performer has to give us the product to create. Often that performer also wants to be in charge of that product, so they want it to be bigger, better, brighter, louder. People are scared to be intimate now. So if it's on, if it's up, if it's loud, and if it's in your face, it's fine. But to keep shows back in that more intimate, quiet, direct is, is the harder part. There's nothing better than having two people having to actually hold their breath to hear that moment. If you make it too easy for everybody, if you just go loud and they all sit back because they're getting hit by it, you've actually lost your contact. We, we get told off so much by critics and by um, audiences about the levels of music, how loud it is, too loud, too big, too bright, and it's often completely out of our control. We're just one person in the chain, and then there's always someone at the end of the chain that goes more. Bring it down, it's easier. <laughs>